Hey everyone, so I wanted to do my week 6 pregnancy vlog. I'm um, a couple days late. I turned um, into my 6th week on Friday and it's now Sunday, so I just have time to be doing this. Uh, I have a couple of symptoms that I jotted down. Tired. <laughs> um, yeah, very tired, all the time. Tired, tired, tired. Yawning all the time. Like, I get to work. I get to work at, oops, sorry. I get to work at 8, and like by 8.25 I'm yawning. It's like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And I slept like 9 hours the night before, so it's like, I'm so tired. And that continues on throughout the whole entire day. Yawn, yawn, yawn. Bitchy. So freaking bitchy. Irritable. Short-tempered. Anything, like, will set me off. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this right now. Um, Sorry to keep moving the camera. It's not in a very good angle. Okay. So, yeah, very short-tempered. I don't have the patience for, like, any bullshit anymore. I'm just, like, so over it, and I will tell someone what, I, what I'm thinking, and, like, sorry. Hungry. Um, I've had, like, the spurts of just, like, being completely starving. Like, I will eat something, and then, like, two hours later, I think I'm going to die because I haven't eaten anything. But then, like, sometimes I'll take a couple bites, and I'll be full, or I'll feel a little bit sick. But I haven't really had any morning sickness, like, maybe a little bit queasy, but not, like, nauseous extremely, or I haven't vomited at all. Um, cranky, <laughs> which goes with bitchy and irritable and all that stuff. Forgetful. I have been forgetful since, still. Um, just kind of not all there half the time, like, I don't know, my body is busy doing other things. Uh, what else? Oh, the day after I recorded my last um, vlog, I, I think it was Wednesday, on Thursday, I actually had some additional implantation bleeding, and it was actually pretty scary because I wasn't sure what it was. It wasn't bright red blood, but it was brown, and it was um, just when I wiped, but it was scary. So I was at work, and I had wiped, and I was just like in shock, like I couldn't move for like 10 seconds, I was like really scared that it was a miscarriage, and so I ended up calling my new midwife that I just made the appointment with the day before, so um, the nurse asked me questions like was I having cramping, and um, how long has it been going on, and when was my first day of my last period, and she said it sounded consistent with just implantation bleeding, even though on Saturday, that was my first occurrence of implantation, and like I said before, it was only for a couple hours. Um, that had stopped, and there was absolutely nothing until that Thursday, when again I had another um, occurrence of bleeding or spotting. She said because it was brown that it was old blood, so it just had taken a long time to, um, I guess, travel down. So <clears throat> that was better, and there's been nothing, absolutely nothing since since then. So that's good. Um, but it was still very, very scary. <laughs> and then also, she asked me my blood type, and I'm B negative. And she wanted to make sure that the midwife didn't want to get um, me to have to get my rogram, or gam, I think that's how you say it, shot early, <clears throat> which is when you have the Rh negative and the Rh positive factor, and your body like fights against itself and the baby, like because of the positive and negative blood rhesus factor or whatever. I'm probably saying this totally wrong. And I'm in the medical field, but, um, um, there's like a bunch of YouTube videos about the RH factor if you wanted to learn more about that. But the midwife said, no, it's fine. I don't have to get that yet. So my first appointment is still on the 24th and we're slowly taking off the days. I'm getting very excited. Okay. What else? Um, the beginning of my fifth week, I totally increased my folate intake. I've been taking a multivitamin, yes, for forever. It has 800 micrograms of folic acid, but I also wanted to um, really prepare my body for the fifth week, which is when the neural tubes close. So I really tried to load up on foods that were folate rich. So I had eggs uh, with spinach in the morning with folate and rich bread, bananas, um, I bought some Naked Juice, the green machine, which is like spinach and broccoli, which it doesn't say on the bottle that it has folate in it, but if it has spinach, it does have folate in it. 
but I'm not sure if the juice form contains folate. Anyway, I also had orange juice and oranges, which are also folate rich. Um, what else? I've noticed um, still some shortness of breath, and um, I can feel like my heart racing if I'm just like walking a little bit sometimes. So I'll talk to my midwife about that when I go. Um, I'm still exercising every day, two and a half miles to three and a half miles. And it's fine, but today when I did my walk, I went three and a half miles today. I was a little bit dizzy when I was done, and um, I've been craving a lot of water. So I had a bunch of water when I came home, and I had a bunch before I left, but still. So that's another thing. Um, I've been drinking a lot of water. Baby loves water. And baby also loves veggies, like the Naked Juice, the Green Machine, um, veggie pizza, anything veggie. Which is great. Um, what else? I think that's it for symptoms and like signs and stuff. Um, I also have um, my little pea sticks. I did like a progression. So I taped them to the sheet of paper. I don't know if you can really see them. This is the first one. I'm sorry if that's backwards, but this is 9 DPO in the morning and this is 9 DPO in the PM. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see. You can definitely see a shade of a line. 10 DPO in the morning, nothing. But 10 DPO in the evening, you can definitely see it. That's the one I showed you last week. And then I had a couple, I can't really see, a couple in between there. This was, I think, 13 DPO, which was um, an awesome first response. And then I actually ran out of sticks. So I read on um, the website, Pee on a Stick Attic, I think it's .org, um, that you can actually use LH ovulation predict predictor um, sticks as pregnancy tests. Only if the line is as dark or darker than the test line. So these are the two LH sticks, and you can see it's like really dark. And then I got some new P sticks in the mail, and these are them since. So this is like, I don't need, I stopped counting. But I'm kind of a freak and I just take a test every day because I really like to see the two lines show up. So that's my little progression of darkness of HCG on the cheapy urine internet strips. I've also gotten some baby things, but I think I'm going to save that for next week and do like a big, big-ish baby haul. Um, we're going to try this thing where we buy stuff every week for the baby so we're not having to like wait and then buy a whole bunch of stuff. So it's really hard shopping for gender neutral clothing or gender neutral baby products but um, I'm getting a lot of ivory and things in yellow. Uh, I got a couple baby books I wanted to show you guys. So the first book that I got, well one of the books I got is The Mother of All Pregnancy Books. Again this is probably backwards. Um, this book is okay so far. It doesn't really have week by week which is what I'm really looking for because obviously I want to know what's going on every week. But it does have a lot of good information. But it's kind of like randomly placed in here. It's not like um, like in a timeline throughout your pregnancy. So this is pretty good um, for just general info. Um, then I got the fourth edition, Much Expecting You're Expecting, which is good for week by week. Um, well, not really week by week, but... Um, a small paragraphs about each week, but month by month, like the third month, second month, first month, and then it breaks it down to week by week in there, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff like in the middle, lots of info, so this is um, a good read. I got the Mayo Clinic Guide to Healthy Pregnancy, which is a big fat book, and this is, it does have week by week. So that's good. And it has like pictures of the baby's size. Like, um, so for example, I'm six weeks and the baby is very small <laughs> and looks freaky, but that's okay. So that's the baby, actual size. Very small. And that's like blown up. Like, freaky. Yikes. Next week. It looks a little better, but week eight looks even better. So that's seven, and then eight. Looking good. And then there's just cram full of information, too. Like, after the weeks are done, there's just tons of info. 
And then the last book I had, and I've had this for a while, is Your Pregnancy Week by Week. And this must be an old edition. This is, like, old school. And it doesn't really have that much information. Like, of course it's week by week, but, like, it's, like, a page or so. So, this is okay. So between all four of these books, I've been able to get the information I crave, I guess. Um, so that's all I wanted to share for this week. If you have any questions about week six, put them below, and I will try to remember my answers because, um, again, these are going to be pre-recorded because I'm not going to announce my pregnancy until January. So, yeah. But I hope this is helpful to some people, and that's why I'm doing these vlogs. And, yeah, I will see you guys next week with uh, Baby Stuff's haul. Bye.